This is another story it's called The Silence of the Kitsch Porcelain. The Silence of the Kitsch Porcelain Siren. And it's the shortest story in the book. Uh, it's only a few lines. All the stories are, are quite long, but this one is quite short. And it's only a few lines, but it took me a long, long time to write it. It took me like a year to write it, okay? And the reason for that is because I wanted, I wanted the story uh, that telling me to speak up. Uh, right. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes? Yes. Okay. I wanted the story to be one line long, right? So I was really ambitious. And that is the reason why it took me so long to write, because the story could not be told in one line. So I struggled, you know, for a whole year, and then I resigned myself that it would have to be longer. So it's just like, I think it's like four lines. Uh, you know, but I managed to say everything I wanted to say. And the story is a gloss on, on I'm sure you know, you know, the myth of the sirens as being, you know, the siren's song. The myth of the sirens where say, sirens are, are dangerous. The siren's song e equals female trouble. Ulysses had to tie himself to the mast of the ship not to hear the song because there were his actresses. So they had to, you know, he had to cover his ears, uh, not cover his ears, uh, tie himself to the, to the mast so he could sail through and actually listen to the beautiful song without uh, being lured to, to the place that was supposed to spell disaster, right? So, uh, and that's in the Odyssey and blah, blah, blah. So a few centuries later, Kafka retook that story and, and what he says more or less is imagine if the siren you know, if the siren's song is so, uh, you know, dangerous, imagine the silence, the, the silence. So he wrote a story called the, the Silence of the Sirens. So this is continuing from that tradition of, you know, song, silence, sirens, you know. And it's written from the siren's point of view because all the stories are written from a female point of view. So it's taking, you know, the siren, the siren song. It's called an, another thing. It's very short, but I think in some ways it's very long. And I'm going to let you in into a little secret. Just one, because there's another one that you have to work out yourself. Okay? There is one word uh, that she whispers, which is sensucht. Sensucht is a German word that I came across via, um, through Kundera, Milan Kundera. And it's a word that is more or less untranslatable. It's a really, really beautiful word. What it means, uh, and it cannot be translated, but more or less it's a word that speaks about longing. Uh, in Spanish, añoranza. Longing in, in Portuguese, more or less, saudade. But it's not the same. It's a word that implies you are longing for something that might have happened, that could still happen. Uh, but you don't know, and, and that kind of longing, it, could be, it could, could be related to love, to desire, it could be related to a country, a space that you want to inhabit, it could be related also to an ambition, which I think is very, interest, very interesting for artists, because it's longing for something, something that could be. So the thing is there, in potentia, you don't know whether it happened or not. Well, this very short story is becoming very long, but anyway, <laughs> I read it. Okay, so Sensu, to remember, Wikipedia is, you know, it's a really beautiful concept. So, the silence of the kitsch porcelain siren. They say that beneath her melancholy silence beats almost inaudible the following whisper. Unwritten song, children in coma, sometimes from the chameleon family, sometimes so private, others 
sensu ktu. Sebet.